Technological Progress, The Short, The Medium, and The Long Run, Chapter 13. This chapter looks at a number of issues raised by technological progress in the short, the medium, and the long run. In Chapter 12, we celebrated the merits of technological progress. In the long run, you learned technological progress leads to increases in the standard of living. Popular discussions of technological progress often talk about the loss of jobs and increase in inequality because of technological progress. Are these fears groundless? Chapter 13 Outline 13-1 Short-run response of output and unemployment to increases in productivity. 13-2 Medium-run response of output and unemployment to increases in productivity. 13-3. Effects of technological progress on income inequality in the long run. Thirteen-one. Productivity, output, and unemployment in the short run. For simplicity, we ignore capital so that the production function becomes y equals a n. So output is produced using only labor as shown by equation 13.1. Rewrite equation 13.1 as n equals y over a. So employment equals output divided by productivity as shown by equation 13.2. In the short run, output is determined by the IS and LM relations as shown by equations 13.3. IS relation shows output depends on demand, which is a sum of consumption, investment and government spending. Consumption depends on disposable income. Investment depends on the borrowing rate equal to the policy rate plus a risk premium and on sales. Government spending is given. LM relation says that the central bank determines the policy rate R. 13-1 Productivity, Output and Unemployment in the Short Run Figure 13-1 shows the demand for goods in the short run following an increase in productivity. An increase in productivity may increase or decrease the demand for goods. Thus, it may shift the IS curve to the left or to the right. What happens depends on what triggered the increase in productivity in the first place. If technological progress leads to increase in consumer confidence, aggregate demand and output may increase. But even in this case, whether employment will increase will depend on the increase in labor productivity. Since percentage change in employment equals percentage change in output minus percentage change in productivity. 13-1. Productivity, Output, and Unemployment in the Short Run, Empirical Evidence. Figure 13-2 shows labor productivity and output growth in the United States since 1960. There is a strong positive relation between output growth and productivity growth, but the causality runs from output growth to productivity, not the other way around in the short run. Even when change in productivity is exogenous due to improvement in technology, its effect on employment in the short run is ambiguous. 13-1 Productivity, Output and Unemployment in the Medium Run In the medium run, the economy tends to return to the natural level of unemployment. Is the natural rate of unemployment itself affected by changes in technology? The theme of technological unemployment typically resurfaces whenever unemployment is high, example, the Great Depression. Because the natural rate of unemployment is determined by the price setting relation and the wage setting relation, chapter seven, we can consider how changes in technology affect each of the two relations. 13-2 Productivity, Output, and unemployment in the medium run. Assumptions for price setting. Equation 13.1 implies that each worker produces A units of output. The nominal cost of producing one unit of output is one over A times W equals W over A, where W is the nominal wage. Firms set price with the markup M so that P equals 1 plus M times W over A. 
assumption for weight setting. Equation 13.4 shows that W equals AE times PE times function of UZ, which is an extension of equation 7.1 so that wages reflect the increase in productivity. Thirteen dash one, productivity, output, and unemployment in the short run. Assumption for weight setting given by equation thirteen point four is W equals A E P E times function of U and Z, where E represented the expected level of technology and prices, which is an extension of equation seven point one, so that wages reflect the increase in productivity. Reorganizing equation thirteen point three, we get equation thirteen point five. W over P equals A over 1 plus M, which says the real wage paid by firms increases one for one with productivity. The real wage implied by price setting is independent of the unemployment rate. In the medium run, PE equals P and AE equals A, then equation 13.4 becomes equation 13.6, W over P equals A times a function of U and Z which says that the real wage implied by wage bargaining depends both on the level of productivity and the unemployment rate. Thirteen dash two, productivity and the natural rate of unemployment. Figure thirteen dash three shows the effects of an increase in productivity on the natural rate of unemployment. An increase in productivity shifts both the wage and the price setting curves by the same proportion and thus has no effect on the natural rate. 13-2 Productivity and the natural rate of unemployment Empirical evidence Figure 13-4 shows productivity growth and unemployment averages by decade 1890-2014. There is little relation between the 10-year averages of productivity growth and the 10-year averages of the unemployment rate. If anything, higher productivity growth is associated with lower unemployment. 13-2 Productivity and the natural rate of unemployment Figure 13-5 shows the effects of a decrease in productivity growth on the unemployment rate when expectations of productivity growth adjust slowly. If it takes time for workers to adjust their expectations of productivity growth, a slowdown in productivity growth will lead to an increase in the natural rate for some time. Suppose productivity growth slows down. A increases more slowly than before. If expectations of productivity growth adjust slowly, then AE will increase for some time more than A does. In this case, weight setting relation will shift up more than the price setting relation. Equilibrium will move from B to B prime, and natural rate will rise. As workers eventually adjust their expectations, unemployment will fall back to its original level. Summary, there is no support in theory or in the data for the idea that faster productivity growth leads to higher unemployment. Thirteen dash two, productivity and the natural rate of unemployment. In the short run, there is no reason to expect a systematic relation between movements in productivity growth and movements in unemployment. In the medium run, if there is a relation between productivity growth and unemployment, it appears to be an inverse relation. Fears of technological unemployment probably come from structural change, the change in the structure of the economy induced by technological progress. 13-3, technological progress, churning, and inequality. Harvard economist Joseph Schumpeters emphasized in the 1930s that the process of growth is a process of creative destruction. New goods make old ones obsolete. Churning, new techniques of production require new skills, making some old skills less useful. Evidence of wage inequality, workers with low, high, levels of education have seen their relative wage fall, rise steadily over time. Focus, job destruction, churning, 
and earnings losses. Two economists found that mass layoffs cause enormous relative earnings declines, whether they occur in a recession or an expansion. Focus, the long view, technology, education, and inequality. Returns to education measured by wage differentials have provided economic incentives for people to stay in school longer. Two economists found that technological progress that is accompanied by an increase in the demand for skilled and educated workers does not necessarily increase economic inequality. Figure 1 shows wage differentials and the returns to education 1939 to 1995. Up to 1950, wage differentials fell because increase in demand for skilled workers was more than offset by increase in supply. Wage differentials started to go up after the 1980s. Since the 1980s, relative supply has continued to increase, but not fast enough to match the continued increase in relative demand. Thirteen three, technological progress, churning, and inequality. Figure thirteen six shows evolution of relative wages by education level, nineteen seventy three to two thousand twelve. Since the early nineteen eighties, the relative wages of workers with a low education level have fallen. The relative wages of workers with a high education level have risen. Thirteen three, technological progress, churning, and inequality. Wage inequality is largely caused by a steady increase in the demand for high-skilled workers relative to the demand for low-skilled workers because international trade. U.S. firms that employ higher proportion of low-skilled workers are increasingly driven out of markets by imports from similar firms in low-wage countries. Skilled biased technological progress. New machines and new methods of production require more and more high-skill workers. 13-3, technological progress, churning, and inequality. Figure 13-7 shows the evolution of the top 1% income share in the United States since 1913. Top 1% refers to the top percentile. In 2014, these were families with annual income, including capital gains, above $387,000. Top 1% to 5% is the next 4% with annual income between $167,000 and $387,000. Top 5% to 10% is the bottom half of the top decile. Families with annual income between $118,000 and $167,000. Income is defined as annual gross income reported on tax returns, excluding all government transfers. The evolution of the top 1% share shown in figure 13-7 is striking. Although the share of total income going to households in the top 1% was around 10% in the late 1970s, it now stands at more than 20% today. And while the graph stops in 2008, inequality appears to have gotten worse since then with the top 1% capturing 95% of income growth from 2009 to 2014 if capital gains are included. Inequality in the United States measured this way is probably higher than in any other society at any time in the past anywhere in the world, writes Thomas Piketty, whose book Capital in the 21st Century, when it was published in 2014, topped the list of best-selling books worldwide. 13-3, technological progress, churning, and inequality. Figure 13-8, the top income share and patenting in the United States, 1963 to 2013. The figure plots the number of patent applications per thousand inhabitants against the top 1% income share. Observations span the years between 1963 and 2013. Philip Aguillon and co-authors in the article from which figure 13.8 is taken make the point that a technological innovation allows the innovator to get ahead of competing producers. Often it also allows him to produce with fewer workers. 
both of these, the new technology and the lower labor input, contribute to increasing the innovator's share of income at the expense of the worker's share of income, at least until other entrepreneurs catch up with the new technology. Through this mechanism, innovation raises top income inequality, the more so, the higher the number of innovations, and this can explain the rise in the share of the top 1% in the 1920s and since the early 1980s.